<laughs> hey hey guys. guys, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Cupid Hannah, and my name is Red Roses Kenny. And today we'll be talking about the language of love. Specifically, all the words to describe love from other languages that have made its way into the English. These are words that don't have direct translations, but we'll take a look at the meanings now. So, are you ready? Let's get started. We'll start with the word forelsket, which comes from Scandinavia. This can roughly be translated as euphoria and means the feeling you get when you're falling in love, the beginning of love. Moving on to the word kalig, which comes from Tagalog, a language spoken in the Philippines. This is a feeling of joy when getting something romantic occurs. So when you get a tingly feeling watching romantic movies, you are experiencing kalig. Have you ever wanted to chat up that nice looking guy or gal, but just didn't have the courage to start up that conversation? Maybe your interest is experiencing the same feeling. There is a word for that from the Fuegan language spoken in Tierra del Fuego. It's quite complicated, so pay attention. The word is Mami Latinatapai. This is a look shared by two people, with each wishing the other would initiate the conversation. Next, we have the word Virat, which comes from Hindi. This is pain of separation of a loved one. It is quite similar to word logging, as in to long for someone. Speaking about missing someone, we have the word Saudad, which comes from Portuguese. Saudad is when you miss someone or something that is no longer with you. From the Inuit language, there is a word ixtapuk. This is a feeling of anticipation when you're expecting a guest. So let's just say you invited a guest, your love interest to be more sure, and they've accepted. You might feel ixtapuk when they arrive. Another interesting word from the Dutch language is kwisting. This word means to invite someone into your bed for some pillow talk. Okay, anyway, moving on. From the Boro language, a language spoken in India, we have the word onsra. This refers to love, you know, it won't last. Hmm, that's a bit sad, don't you think? Not so sad as the next word. From French, there's the expression la douleur exquise, which can roughly be translated as unreciprocal love. This is the heartbreaking pain of wanting someone you can't have. Yeah, I guess relationships are always hunky-dory. From the Bantu language, there is a word elingua. It's kind of similar to the expression three strikes and you're out. This is when a person forgives a mistake for the first time and tolerates the mistake for the second time, but you won't be forgiven for the third time. Which ties in nicely with our next phrase, cavoli riscaldati. This in Italian literally means reheated cabbage. It's a term used to describe the attempt to restart a failed relationship. I guess the chances of the success are very slim. I'd say so. The best you can hope is for resvluto, which comes from the Russian language. This refers to sentimental feeling you have for a person that you don't love anymore. Let's go back on a positive note, shall we? The word gigil, whose origin comes from Malaysia, Indonesia, or the Philippines, means the urge to pinch or squeeze something that is unbearably cute. Did you ever have that aunt who squeezed your cheeks when you were young? Aww. Finally, our last word is Niraki. This is a Greek origin and it means to do something with passion, with love, with soul, with creativity. I suppose the cinema of Niraki could be enthusiasm. So what do you do with Niraki? Write your comments down below. These have been 14 words of love. And we, and we wish you a happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Now please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and we'll see, see you in our, our next video. Bye-bye.